We're not too far away from a race start. So let's take a look at our truck assist starting grid. And Matty Anton Di Pasquale from Pole. It's his fifth of this E-Series. I can't wait to see the battle unfold between he and Shane off the start line. Yeah, we just saw a quick shot of Alexander Rossi, the 2016 Indy 500 winner. Anton Di Pasquale has Shane Van Gisbergen next to him. Row two belongs to Scott McLaughlin, our championship leader, and Chaz Mostert. Then it's Andre Heimgartner. He has been very consistent in this BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. Seven and eight go to Jacobson and Cam Waters. Jake Kostecki will have Scott Pye alongside him. They make up the top ten for the first of four races this evening. Todd Hazelwood and Zane Goddard. There's Davey Reynolds back after missing round two. He was at Mount Panorama last weekend, uh, last Wednesday night rather. Jamie Wincup has Angelo Mazuris. Formula Ford Australian champion last year and now in the Dunlop Super 2 Series. We move through the field. There's Alexander Rossi. So the Napa Auto Parts car will get away from position number 20. Alex Davison and Bryce Fullwood make up 21 and 22. Fabian Coulthard didn't qualify too well in that session. He'll start from 23. Rick Kelly, 25 with Chris Pither next to him. So the biggest starting grid that we've got. There's Joey Logano. Former NASCAR champion has Jack Smith alongside him and Marcus Ambrose at the rear of the field because, as you pointed out in our chat with him, his simulator broke down essentially, or parts of it did. He had to run across and get a new virtual reality headset. And here we go racing at the circuit, Gilles Villeneuve. Race 11 of the championship. This circuit right by Montreal on the St. Lawrence River, an island circuit, 10 laps of sprint racing, supercar style, with a sprinkle of international superstars, and Anton Di Pasquale gets a ripping start. Van Gisbergen covers. McLaughlin forces the issue, and already Anton runs wide, makes a little mistake, and that's yielded a bunch of time and space for him. He's actually moved back two spots, maybe three, because McLaughlin might snip him. Hold tyres to negotiate. Got to try and make it picture perfect through this first lap. And if you can get position right now, it makes a huge difference. So nice start for Van Gisbergen. Up to turn six they go. Then on to seven. That releases them onto the back straight here. Marcus Ambrose has started from the pits. There was contact and collision down at turn two. It's such a tricky start to this racetrack crompo, isn't it? So Van Gisbergen has the lead over our pole sitter, Anton Di Pasquale, by four tenths of a second. Then it's Scott McLaughlin. You're riding with Will Davison, the Milwaukee racer. Behind him is Cameron Waters, Andre Heimgartner, Chaz Mostert, Jake Kostecki, Scotty Pye and Bryce Full would make up the 10. And some significant damage back in the pack. I think that's Fabian Coulthard's car, number 12, for Shelby Power Racing. He's got the bonnet missing off that car. So very difficult making a clean run down into there the first chicane. And we talked about that when we looked at the track map before Fabian Coulthard on the talk back at the moment with some damage on his car. Our race leader is Shane Van Gisbergen. He's got Anton Di Pasquale tucked right in behind. And then in third position at the moment is Scott McLaughlin. Will Davison in fourth position. They've just managed to get cleanly past Champions Wall for the first of 10 laps. And some of the names that have metaphorically dropped their signature on that wall are huge. Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher, Jacques Villeneuve, son of the gentleman who has the circuit named after him. Nico Rosberg, Juan Pablo Montoya, Carlos Sainz, Jensen Button, Sebastian Vettel. All of the biggest names in motorsport have come to grief in that location. In fact, I called an IndyCar race up there a few years ago. It's a beautiful racetrack. And the number of people that wipe that wall through the race is just extraordinary. I think we'll see a few more tonight. So a good battle here from Heimgartner putting pressure on Cam Waters as Will Davison holds his fire in position four. Let's see if we can go back and check out what happened to Fabian in car number 12. BP Ultimate Replay will tell us a bit more of the story. And he tangles with Alex Davison. In fact, there was already some trauma further up the road. Rick Kelly gets centre punched. Mark Winterbottom's in there. Macaulay Jones in the cool drive. Blue car takes a whack as well. So quite a few people have copped some damage. They've got fast repairs enabled in the simulator this evening, so that will be able to be resolved pretty quickly. So, Van Gisbergen, Di Pasquale, McLaughlin, one, two and three. They've been the cream of the crop in the first three rounds of this series. It's a pretty small margin across the top three, and you can see how tight it is. We're riding with Anton. 
picked up a little bit of ground under brakes. You've got to be so careful negotiating those curves. And that was the wall that I spoke about a moment ago. We're back to the start finish line area. And into this first chicane, not only do we see trouble here in a virtual sense, we see it every single time we see motor racing here. It's a hot spot. It's a trouble spot. Car 99, D. Pasquale. So Van Gisbergen has the lights flashing. He's third in this championship, a three-time race winner. Five podiums as well. And aside from a DNF in race three, he's been no lower than seventh with an average finish result of 3.6 simply outstanding and so too the man behind him Anton Di Pasquale the last time we checked in on this group it was looking racy and it's getting racier as the Ned racer of Andre Heimgartner applies the blowtorch to the back of the monster energy Mustang of Cam Waters he has a look on the inside underneath the bridge and Heimgartner gets the position he's been very consistent so far this year he's not had a podium Andre Heimgartner but he has had a string of very solid top tens. Now, we'd like to check in to the bunker with our regular driving standards advisor for the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, Craig Baird, because obviously there was a significant knot to untangle on that opening lap. What are your thoughts, Craig? Good evening to you. Yeah, well, good evening, guys. As usual, when they come to the bunker, there's normally some bad news that follows, but uh, yeah, a few cars taken out. We had a dangerous re-entry by Jake Gostecki in uh, car 344. Uh, causing quite a bit of damage. So we're going to hand a uh, drive-through penalty, relatively small penalty here, only 16 seconds for a drive-through. So uh, that is passed on to car 344. Thanks for the update, Craig, and we'll check in during the evening. You've got Nash in the background there helping out this evening. Shane Van Gisbergen's got a half-second margin over Anton Di Pasquale from Scott McLaughlin. It's a one-second gap back to him and the Bunnings trade power pass power play. Let's have a look and see what this looks like from the point of view of Andre Heimgartner in the Ned Mustang. Those hands will be all sanitised up. And he slides down the inside, back to second gear, pokes it across the top of the kerb, slides out the other side. That's Will Davison in the foreground, and he got the job done very nicely. He's got some new gear, Andre. So he's running pretty quickly, and what a pretty sight this is. The Pertec Racing entry of Marcus Ambrose in car number 40, the dual Australian supercar champion, who's had success at this location in NASCAR as well. And I'll get some additional comments from our pit reporters in Melbourne, our Pertec pit reporters, quite appropriately. Good evening to Chad <laughs> and Jonathan. Yeah, I guess we're not going to be too impartial tonight, Neil, because we've got a guy to cheer for being the Pertec pit reporters. I think Marcus's bad luck that used to haunt him at this circuit right back to when Robbie Gordon tagged him in 2007 is continuing. Now he's got rig troubles tonight, Jonathan. He's got rig troubles and had to start the race from pit lane, so that never helps, although it does help you avoid the carnage. But what we're seeing right now is a pit window open for our leaders, Chad, for Van Gisbergen and Dipper Squally. It's about a 25 and a half second transit time, and there's some clear space around the P11 and P13 range that they'll fall into. And have a look at this, Van Gisbergen's into the pit lane for his first stop. So we're starting to see the, the first of the heavy hitters come into the pit lane. Also watch out for double brake markers where that pit entrance is, so there could be some drama there tonight. We'll keep an eye on that because you can tangle easily on the pit lane entry here. And in fact, the departure's a bit tricky here as well. Picking up Shane Van Gisbergen. So by the way, Marcus has moved up 15 spots now into 13th position and Van Gisbergen serves his compulsory stop. It'll be about eight seconds to take on some new Dunlop soft tyres. And away he goes per tick pit stop report. A bit of wheel spin on departure and away he goes. Will Davison's in the background and Chaz Mostert as well. And you'll be interested to see Chaz when we pick him up on the, I was going to say onboard camera, but that's not really quite right. It's sort of bedroom view, isn't it? <laughs> so we'll have a look at Chaz in just a tick. So positions one through to seven at the moment yet to pit as Chaz Mostert vacates the pit lane. The one compulsory stop across all four races tonight. They won't need any fuel. There's Joe Exotic himself. Yeah, have a go at him. Hi, cats and kittens. <laughs> How are you, Chaz? <laughs> what on earth has he done? Uh, Can, uh, the, you know, one of the most exciting things that I'm looking forward to, and all motorsport fans will join me on this one, can you imagine for a nanosecond what Mark Scaife's going to say when he sees that hair colour? <laughs> this is worth the price of admission. So Anton Di Pasquale's got a pretty decent margin at the moment, but it's uh, 1.3 seconds, two seconds out to Scott McLaughlin, 
and McLaughlin's in fact just peeled off into the pit lane now, together with Waters and with Heimgartner. So they've taken their stops. And then it's Fullwood in the middies entry, followed by Percat Holdsworth. And I'm trying to pick up who's done their stop and who hasn't at the moment. The vast majority of the field have actually now taken their compulsory stop in this. We'll see just how they fare. So McLaughlin, who's our championship leader, has got an 89-point margin stationary for his Dunlop tyres. So Marcus Ambrose yet to pit those following Marcus tonight. He's in position number 11. He's pitted there, so I'll just double check on that. But so Marcus now moves up to position number seven as the shuffle goes. I'll also track down our other international wild cards. 18th position for Alexander Rossi at the moment, and Joey Logano down in P28. Picking up on McLaughlin, who's had great strength so far in, and great consistency. In fact, was fourth again in the IndyCar E-Series iRacing event earlier this past week and going back to Anton Di Pasquale he's our race leader over Mick Kirk at the moment a glimpse in the background in the Ford performance entry car number 56 is Joey Logano Daytona 500 winner and a NASCAR champion off to a great start in the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series already had a couple of victories one in Las Vegas another in Phoenix so far this year as Anton comes into the pit lane in car number 99 yeah, and just confirming Crompo Marcus Ambrose has not pitted yet so a little graphic error there. There's Jack Smith. Marcus got uh, quite a lot of success to his name at this location. He's had five starts in Montreal, all of them in the Nationwide, which is the second tier series for NASCAR. He had a seventh, a third, a second, 33rd wasn't so flash in 2010. But in 2011, he was the victor at this location. And we already know about his success at Watkins Glen. So looking forward to seeing whether he can make some more ground through the field. And then again, with what's to come later this evening at Watkins Glen. So let's check out this rejoin and see how it plays. Percat is our leader. And the other thing that they'll be feeling the effects of pretty quickly is the way in which tyres hurt around here. So if you get out there in a decent position now on a younger tyre, you will get some benefit. So there'll be initially some undercut for those that hit early, but that benefit will wash away quite rapidly around here because in reality at this race to, uh, circuit, it does hurt tyres pretty significantly. So that's put Anton Di Pasquale behind Scott McLaughlin. He was behind Shane Van Gisberg, and that's your effective race leader with Nick Percat yet to transit pit lane. Joey Logano's on screen here with Scott Pye tucked in behind. Scott's in the DeWalt entry. There's Joey, bottom right-hand corner of screen. Still waking up. Still waking up. Got up at 3 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, Mooresville, North Carolina, not far from Team Penske headquarters. 29 years of age, 25 NASCAR career victories. And he and Brittany are expecting their second child in a tip of the clock. So I'm tipping the idea of getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go virtual car racing may not go down that well in the Logano household. <laughs> Just playing a game, sweetheart. That's all I'm doing. Not making noise. As we take a look at Alexander Rossi, so he's made up four positions since the start to the 16, 28 years of age, won the Indy 500 back in 2016 as a rookie, seven Indy car wins and six poles. He's runner up in the 2018 series and third overall last year. Of course, he drove with the mayor of Hinchtown, James Hinchcliffe at Bathurst, the Walkinshaw Andretti United last year. And they finished in position number 18. Just looking before, I think, Logano may have actually also affected the passage of Anton in that whole sequence as well. So we'll just see what happens when they fully shake out. Remember earlier in the year, the announcement was made that uh, supercars in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship had moved to a new damper, a control damper, headers by Supershock. So here's the virtual version of that, handling beautifully. Percat, Van Gisberg and McLaughlin, Di Pasquale, and of the names that I've just read out, Nick Percat is yet to stop. So he's got a nine-odd second lead. Remember from the Hino Hub details that I rattled through before, it's about a 17 and a half second transition plus the tyre stop. So that'll give you an idea of where Nick drops in as we pick up an image of Scotty McLaughlin. And whilst we were following all that, Marcus Ambrose has done his compulsory pit stop. So remember, he started in pit lane, hence he had a pit stop next to him. So he has rejoined the field in position 23 after missing qualifying for this one. Don't forget race 12, our next race coming up at this circuit. Another 10 lapper, but it's a reverse grid race from the results out of this one.
And that's really throwing a spanner in the works across the first three rounds of this BP Supercars All-Star Z Series. Now this has hotted up nicely here. So there's been a bit of traffic effect. We've got some slight variations in where and when they've stopped. So tyre life is a bit different across the top three cars. But essentially you've got the cream right at the top here. You've got Van Gisbergen, McLaughlin and Di Pasquale. And they're all essentially a car length apart. So this is going to be very good with just a little over two laps remaining. It's a great racetrack. Back of McLaughlin's thing just squirming around under brakes. And these guys are remarkable with the way in which they interact with the iRacing simulator. The extraordinary control and the patience required and the skill required to manage the visuals of racing a car without the feel being telegraphed to you and the way in which your hands and your feet have to work to be able to pick their brake points, find the ideal lines and get on with racing is pretty impressive as we pick up on Chas Mostert. And he's in behind David Reynolds at the moment. And David's in the Penrite car, the Mobile One Appliances Online. Commodore is there, car number 25. And tucked in behind him, Super Cheap Auto Racing, was Jack LeBrock. And they're down at the moment in 11, 12 and 13 at the hairpin. Where you have to manage wheel spin in low gear very carefully. Isn't that a cool shot? This is the battle again at the very top of the pack. Coming up to just on one lap remaining, approaching champion's wall. So, so easy, Matt, to either underbrake here and give away valuable meterage, or massively outbreak yourself and end up scraping your name on the wall together with some other big names. And McLaughlin's had a fabulous run through the chicane. He's on the attack and looking left, right, under and over. He sits it up high. Shane covers on the inside, uses a little bit more curb, and Scotty gives him a nudge. And it could be a bump and run. Will eyebrows raise in the bunker for Craig Baird on that one? Does he redress Scott McLaughlin or does he press on? Anton's hungry to buy a place in this space as well. Well, he's pressing on. He is pressing on all right as they head up towards the back part of this circuit. So almost halfway through the final lap. We've had 10 races so far in this series and these three drivers together have collectively exactly claimed seven same of them. as Bathurst guys. McLaughlin's going to have to readdress. Which he's just done. Thanks for the update. Now he could be vulnerable here. In fact, it's on again. He could be vulnerable to Anton who wants to round him up on the outside. Did he get it done? Yes. Anton squeaks on by. So in the redress process, McLaughlin has yielded not one, but now two positions and moves back into third. Down to the hairpin. We're in the closing meterage of this race. And Shane Van Gisbergen, who's already had three race victories so far in 2020 in the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series, is potentially on target to notch another. Joey Logano in the foreground in the Ford Performance Mustang. And Shane tries to shake him because there is a slipstream effect with these cars on a track like this. Anton tucked in right underneath him. And is he going to be able to get there? It'll be really super close at the end of this, but Van Gisbergen hangs on by just a car length, and what a terrific race. Two tenths of a second, the winning margin between Shane Van Gisbergen and Anton Di Pasquale. Scott McLaughlin had to give away that position around the back to Van Gisbergen, but this man was right there to pounce as well. Another podium finish for Di Pasquale and for Scotty McLaughlin and another win in the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series for Shane Van Gisbergen. That's win number four. Another extraordinary race. He started on the front row yet again. And for Marcus Ambrose, he's still circulating on his final lap after starting from pit lane. And he will cross in 22nd position, remember, it's a reverse grid race coming up in a matter of moments. So we're going to have some big, big names at the front of the grid. So the BP Ultimate results give another victory to Shane Van Gisbergen with Dee Pasquale and McLaughlin fighting it out. Good performance too from Will Davison who's really finding his feet in this series. Cam Waters, Andre Heimgartner yet again inside the top 10. And so too is Lee Holdsworth. Davey Reynolds in position 11. So Alexander Rossi, the best of the wild cards in P16. Angelo Mazuris in 19th. There's Marcus in P22. Joey Logano and Jack Smith finish 28th and 29th, which means they will start on the front row of the grid. 
for the next race. Take a look at the Koala race highlights and you'll see that it all goes on down here on the approach to turn one and then the flick back out of turn two. Good start from the pole sitter, Di Pasquale. So that's turn one. He got out onto the grass and had to fire it back onto the circuit. And that's where the trouble started. So two or three cars involved in that. Car 344 four of Jake Kostecki given a drive through penalty for dangerous re-entry. Alex Davison was in the wars at Bathurst last week and he's in the wars here as well, but so too was Fabian Coulthard who got absolutely pummeled in that exchange. Anton in the Penrite Racer. Wow, what a performance. He's eighth in the championship coming into this round, but you get the feeling that he's going to leave here with a lot of points. That was the moment that the Shell V-Power Racer of Scotty McLaughlin made contact with Van Gisbergen. And as he gives that position back, well, Di Pasquale says, I'll have a piece of that. Thank you very much. And McLaughlin goes from first back to third. Another win, though, for the Kiwi Van Gisbergen. Four out of 11 that we've had so far.